it's a super windy one today. Absolutely getting battered. But at least I guess the sun keeps coming out. This time of year, I guess we've got to be grateful for any nice weather that we get. Hello and welcome to another adventure. I'm, uh, I'm making my way up to North Norfolk to a place called Burnham Deepdale where I'm going to um, do an overnighter and uh, I'm going to do a bit of a review of my Van Gogh Galaxy 310 and um, it's a great tent, I've used it a few times now and I just really really love it and I thought I'd do an overnight uh, review, sort of living in it, something a bit different to what you normally see. There's not actually too many well, decent reviews I, I've thought of uh, of the tent on on uh, YouTube. So I thought if I head up there, do a bit of review, do an overnighter, uh, and uh, I can slip out then this afternoon and do some photography, do a bit of landscape photography for myself, and uh, I'll just bring you guys along for the ride and just um, show you the tent and show you what it's like and give you my thoughts on it. In a Facebook group I'm in, they, um, I started a thread on, you know, what tents do people use that you can stand up in? This is a motorcycle camping forum. You know, what tents do you use you can stand up in? And a few people were a bit like, oh, what do you need a tent you can stand up in for? You know, I don't see the point. And then some people saying, oh, I've got this tent, it's only two kilos and it does this and it does that. And, and uh, it's tiny and it fits in any pannier and yeah i get that you know i have got tents that i can do that with you know i've got a really tiny tent that is my go-to tent like when i did the um trans anglia trail earlier this year i took my van gogh helium 2 which is a tiny tent it's only about 1.4 kilos and it packs down to nothing but you're not always you know needing a tent like that so say like today i'm i'm gonna go up to um burnham deepdale and and set up like a base camp and i think the van gogh 300 is just perfect for that you know setting up a base camp you go into the adventure bike festival you're meeting some mates somewhere and you're not moving around and you're not traveling across land i.e green lane in off-road then um then something like uh, the Van Gogh 300 is um, is a perfect tent for that. Right, so we're not too far away now. This is um, Burnham Deepdale. The place we're going to is called uh, Deepdale Camping and Rooms. And I think it's down here on the left. I'm just going to show you this first. So the camping's just there, look. And then just here we've got this uh, garage and then all of these shops. So, and it's a really good shop in there, got a great beer selection, because I remember this when I came through earlier in the year. So he's got a great village sort of shop there and a few other things, a fat face and a few other types of shops. There's a pub just down there, name of it escapes me, and, and then over there there's um, the church, and next to the church is the bus stop, and uh, she's going to let me out, I think I'll wait for that car to go. Uh, yeah, so you can see the bus stops just here, and uh, and that's worth knowing because there's a, a bus service called the Coast Liner in this part of Norfolk. So in another part of Norfolk, it's called the Coast Hopper, and here it's called the Coast Liner, and that runs along the coast road and uh, is. Um, is a really handy bus service you can catch all along the coast here there's a bus every sort of hour sort of eight till five i think and um yeah in fact there's the bus now look yeah right okay so it says reception let's go and have a look let's go in check in right so we're just gonna follow this lady she's gonna uh show us where the pitch is
yeah that was 22 quid for the night uh, which is off season so it ain't cheap here but the problem is it's all there is in this area so you know if there was one that was a fiver a night i obviously would have gone there but you know you kind of got to take what you're offered sometimes right okay so it looks like we're here Right, so I've had my briefing from the lady there and um, this is where I'm going to stick up the tent. And uh, so th this is the tent on the back of my bike. So it's the Van Gogh Galaxy 300. Uh, I've used it a few times now. I've car camped with it. Uh, took it on the bike once. <laughs> had it up in the garden for a week to test it in the rain. And so it's fine. I mean, Van Gogh tents, they're made in UK. So you generally get really good quality. Um, you can also send them back to Van Gogh for repairs, so if you do something stupid or, you know, sorting out warranty issues is not a problem. Um, so I do like Van Gogh kit. Um, so that's the tent on there, look, and it, I think, I think the trail weights online, I, I did have a look yesterday, I can't remember what they claim that the tent weighs, but I weighed it anyway on my scales and it was 5.65 kilos so say that's a little bit lighter i think say than uh, the lone rider moto tent so it's a little bit lighter and that's everything that includes uh the the sort of footprint uh the sort of bathtub bit that goes in the vestibule area so that does include the ground sheet for that bit um now i've also i did a video recently and so some you know who follow me on 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 the channel will might have seen the video i did and and so this tent is only slightly bigger uh, sort of bulk wise pack size than my van gogh amiga 250 and that's a um a two-person tunnel tent uh, that i bought for for doing this sort of thing but I mean, I'll talk more about this later, but essentially I just wanted something bigger and, and I just thought, well, why not get this? Because it's, it's, it's still quite small. It easily fits on the back of the bike. You know, I'm quite a lightweight camper anyway. So, I mean, that's my uh, Altrider Hemisphere bag, which is just over 40 litres. So I've got 40 litres of kit there, just over 40 litres, a bit in my rucksack and that on the back there and you can see it's no size i mean that would easily fit on top of one of your panniers um so it's, it's only slightly bigger than like i say than my, my other tent and that fitted on one of the top of the panniers on my uh, when i had my tiger i'll stick up a picture of it if um if i can find it so yeah so people talk about the weight of these and the bulk but i mean seriously i mean it's it's nothing and it's just strapped on there and that's not going anywhere and um, now if i was going across country if i was green lane in my way here i just wouldn't bring this tent but if you're on the road what's the problem now the thing i'm going to do now is i'm going to set the tent up but i'm going to set my timer on my phone there and i'm going to set my camera up so we can see how long it does take to put up because i think that's what a thing a lot of people say is oh the bigger the tent the more time you spend in putting them up and i know a lot of people like these sort of tents that you know we've all seen the adverts because they're so bloody annoying of this person erecting this tent and okay you've set your tent up in 30 seconds but it's a shit tent so what have you achieved it, they weigh a ton they're bulky but okay they're up in 30 seconds well i'd sooner spend five more minutes putting my tent up and be uber uber comfortable for the few days that i'm away or however long it is um we'll talk more about that in a bit so uh anyway enough waffling let's get the tent up
Okay, so there we are, tent all set up. Uh, took about 12 minutes, I think it said, on the timer, which that's probably the longest it's taken me to set it up because it was obviously windy. <laughs> I nearly lost it at one stage. And I've actually put out all the guy lines, which is the first time I've done that. Um, most times I've been out, I've only put, you know, maybe it's four out. I've, in fact, once I didn't put any out because there was no wind and uh, it was just, you know, just didn't need it. Just a fairly solid tent. Uh, so I've just quickly taken a few bits out my, uh, out my bags and because uh, I just want to get off in a minute. The sun is ooh, starting to go down. I just want to go and uh, get the sunset in Hunstanton. So I've took a few, bit, few bits out, done a quick bit of admin. So, so there's the tent set up. It is a really solid tent generally. Um, so it's got six guy lines, as you can see here. And they're not, it's not a particularly expensive or you know top quality cord there i sometimes change them i have changed the pegs the pegs were awful so i've changed it for these sort of um uh, y-shaped pegs that just grip a bit better in softer soils uh so there is venting at the back which i'm gonna come out and sort that out in a minute because uh, i want that open so we don't get too much condensation uh in the night so i'm going to open that vent there um and the you can see it's got vents here at the, on the side so those are open and yeah we don't want any condensation so essentially this is a tunnel tent unlike say the lone rider moto tent which is it kind of is a, a well the lone rider moto tent is a tunnel tent but this like most tunnel tents has only got a door at one end whereas the Lone Rider Moto 10 and the uh, Redverse Atacama, they've got doors at the back as well, which helps with ventilation in the summer. Um, I'm in UK, use this tent mainly in the UK. In fact, I can pretty much say I'm only ever going to use it in the UK. So, you know, we don't get that kind of weather here where it's always baking, but we do get some hot, you know, days in the summer. Uh, and I can appreciate for some that you would want that extra venting. Uh, but from what I've used it so far, uh, it's been good and uh, you know, I've certainly not been too warm in it. Um, in fact, let me just turn that radio down. So, uh, yeah, so it does come with this um, liner, ground sheet, footprint, call it what you want. And it is a bathtub style. Um, it's just blown around a bit at the minute in the wind because uh, I've got the door open. It's not as, nowhere near as bad as that when the door's shut. Uh, so you can see in that vestibule area there, you've got a really, really good size area, plenty of space. I've got my really big chair there, so you could easily put another one here if there was two, a couple of you. So you could easily get in smaller chairs, maybe it's four in here, more if someone was sitting in, in the uh, sleeping area in the pod there. But you've got bags of space. I think it's 1.9 to the roof in the middle. I mean, I'm... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm about one, one seven, eight, I think, 5'11", so um, you've got, you know, certainly head height, plenty of space and uh, plenty of room to move about, which is what I love about these tents. You, you, you've just got the space to, to do what you want to do and live normally. You're not constantly, you know, hunched over and on your knees. You can just relax and kick back a bit more. Um, so this is obviously the sleeping pod. I'll put, I'll stick up um, an image with some of the data on. Uh, I seem to remember it's about 1.8 meters across and it is listed as a three person tent, which I think the other two sort of main tents like the um, lone, uh, the motor tent and the Redverse tents, they're two person tent, but this is just definitely a very comfortable two person tent, more than a three person tent, I'd say. I mean, I've not got my uh, pad all the way over. It would go over a little bit more. And that is a very big pad. That is the Nemo 3D Quasar wide pad. So that is a very wide pad. Uh, so you could see there's plenty of room for another person here if there was. I mean, obviously what you could do with a tent like this, if you're going on a trip, is you could share one tent between two people. So 
you muck, you take the tent and your mucker say tank takes all the cooking gear you know to spread out the weight a little bit i mean you haven't just got to have a big tent like this on your own or be two people you know that is an option you could share it with your mucker as long as you don't mind his snoring and farting in the night i guess uh, but most of us are just going to want a tent to ourselves and have bags of space uh, so you can see there's loads of space, there's plenty of pockets, there's pockets here, there's pockets over there, useful pockets, uh, there's these little tiny little pockets up here that, that you can stick like a, a light in, which I have done before, I've got like this little uh, LED light that I use, um, and I stick a light in there. There isn't a loop in here, uh, there's these tiny little things here, look, you could put something on there, you could soon put some on there, but I mean, sorting out a little loop's not a massive issue. You could easily sew something in. Um, so you can see where you've got the vent in there at the back. And apart from that little bit of mesh there, most of it is, is this sort of thicker material, which does mean in winter, it's gonna be a warmer tent. I will be absolutely toasty in here tonight. I'll be really, really warm. On the door, the door is that solid material, but there is a section of it that you can zip down to get a bit more venting and it's just got then got the mesh so you can do that look so let's just close the door just show you the door shut yeah so there's the door shut and then obviously it's just this section here that you can zip down and then roll it up there's the the lugs look um yeah so uh uh anyway so you, you you've got really you know bags of space in there and if there are two if it's two of you you're either side, which is what I like. You, someone's not having to step over someone else and trip over them in the night. I suppose you could, you know, have all your admin in the middle, your bags and kit. Um, yeah, so this is a really, really good spacious pod just there. One of the things I do like about this Van Gogh Galaxy is the windows. So you've got a, a skylight window here, which obviously lets in bags of light. Um, on this nice bright winter's day today but you can imagine on a dull day whatever time of year that's going to let in a lot of light and then you've also got windows here at the side so you know you, that will let even more light in um, I've got a, a lamp that I normally use I haven't brought it in uh, bear with yeah so I normally use this Lucy light um, you blow it up through the valve just there and it it turns into like a, a lantern and it's got a solar panel so i normally leave that to charge during the day on my tank bag and then obviously as i'm riding along it's charging it up it's, it's a brilliant lamp it's really light weighs nothing and um it's more than enough most of the time but obviously if i set up a base camp i can then hang this from here or hang this from there and then because of the windows it's going to get plenty of light on that during the day to recharge which you know i think is a real uh, bonus touch to this uh, to this van gogh tent yeah so it's got the windows it's got these extra straps you can see here which this is a system that's in a lot of van gogh tents just to help with the bracing so you can see there's some more bracing going across there and there's some more here obviously that is in the way as we're standing here now uh, but this is the first time i've ever had to use it because i've never needed it it's just quite windy today so i've um i've decided to deploy the bracing there is a technical term for that i can't remember what it is uh if you really want to know go and check out van gogh's website yeah so as you can see this is just a really really spacious a uh, very roomy, nice moto camping tent. It's um, plenty big enough for two people. I mean, it's an absolute palace for one. And um, I'm gonna come back here tonight. I'm gonna set up my tablet and I'm gonna do some photo editing. I better sit in my chair, I better cook my tea, uh, get the stove on, have a brew and just sit here and change and kick back. I bought some new tent slippers there. Look, I'm going to try these out tonight. I'll report back on them in a bit, these Berghaus uh, slippers. So I'm about to sit in here tonight, just relax, have something to eat, have uh, bought some nice single malt whiskey there that will come out later. Um, so I'm about to sit here, I've got a curry for tea, have a drink, relax, use my tablet, 
and, and I've got all this space and I'm not crouched down, I'm not kneeling, I'm not hunched over, I'm not, you know, just thoroughly miserable uh, about life because I'm hunkered down in a tiny little tent on a dark winter's night. Uh, anyway, so that's the sort of uh, set up and quick introduction to the tent. I'm gonna make a brew now and then I'm gonna zoom over to Hunstanton for sunset. Speak to you in a bit. So I'm back in the tent. Um, I had a nice uh, session on the beach with my camera, um, taking a few photos. Sunset wasn't quite as good as I hoped, but it was it was better than a totally flat sky. I'll stick up the pictures um, uh, just to show you. It's there's so many photographic opportunities around here if you uh, if you come to this North Norfolk coast. Yeah, so uh, so that was good. So I've come back. I've been and bought. Uh, a few beers, bought some of these Adnams Tally Hoes, uh, which is a stout, they're lovely. Um, some crisps, it's a blimmin' good shop, that shop just round the corner. Um, so what I'm gonna do for my tea, I'm gonna fire up the stove, and I have got this uh, tikka masala thing I found in the shop the other day. I'm gonna mix in some Uncle Ben's, and then best of all, best of all, wait one, wait one caller, in my little in my little cool bag here, I have got my favourite thing, some black pudding. So I'm going to cook up some black pudding in my frying pan with a bit of garlic butter, stirring these, maybe a little bit of water, and so then I've got a lovely yummy curry uh, for my tea. And I'm going to sit in my chair, and I'm going to then sit and watch my uh, tablet, um, no, watch the uh, cycling that I missed earlier today because I was riding up here. So I'm just going to chill out, sit and watch that. Um, I'm connected to my phone for uh, for Wi-Fi, but there is Wi-Fi with a site. In fact, they text me earlier today to say, "Oh, we look forward to seeing you at the site, and here is your uh, code to get access to the Wi-Fi," which I thought was really, really good. I've never had that before, so it is a little pricey here. But you, what you do get what you pay for I think I'll show you the toilet block and that tomorrow before I go it's mega um, I've also got my new light on the go so I'll show you this in a bit uh, or tomorrow maybe let me turn it off so that's it there this is it uh, I've never had a sort of lantern like this before and this is a, um, a Fenix one I forget the model number it's there don't you can see it CL 26 R Pro um, rechargeable, uh, yeah, I'll maybe cover that more uh, tomorrow. So, yes, yeah, so I've got that on. Um, that's a mega little thing, it ch ch chucks out a hell of a lot of power. Put it back on max, there we go. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so we're just gonna have a pleasant evening now. Um, sitting here cooking my tea and uh, watching the cycling. I bought this this year, this has been really useful. It's a sea to summit sort of cooking spatula, folding. I really like it. I've used it quite a few times. So love black pudding. As I understand it, our American friends get quite grossed out by it, but um, it is delicious. So I've got my new, um, tent booties on, these Berghaus tent boots. My feet are really, really toasty warm. They're really comfortable. They're, um, they compact down as well, nice in the bag. Right, so that's cooking nicely. So I'm just gonna uh, chuck in this, uh, this well, it's plant-based, but um, I'm sure it'll taste pretty good. I'm just gonna chuck in some of this savoury chicken Uncle Ben's. Don't know if I need all of that though. I am hungry, but. Oh, 
hoofing out. Mmm. That tastes really good. That is coming along rather nicely. And I just want you to notice that there's hardly any condensation on this. So because you there's quite good venting and because it is such a big space and there's a lot of airflow it is quite a windy uh, night but but it is cool outside now so you would expect there to be some condensation there but nothing at all so um, yeah that's a result can't wait to tuck into that though oh that's ready that is good piping hot Okay, <laughs> that looks delicious. Yeah, so that uh, that's turned out really nice. Um, I am so looking forward to that. Pretty simple, really. Mm. Right. Well, I'm going to chuck into this and uh, watch the cycling. Catch you in a bit. Mm. Two good dollops of that in there. Then pour the water over. Right, so I'm just going to let that uh, coffee cool down so it'll be uh, no doubt absolutely roasting. Um, so last night I had an absolutely glorious night's sleep. Um, so this is a, a, a Nemo Quasar 3D insulated wide sleeping pad. And it wasn't massively expensive. I think it was only about 150 quid. I use this website that's called something like Ultra Lightweight Gear. And what I like about that is it tells you the weight of things. It's very prominent. You can order things by their weight. And I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit obsessed when it comes to getting things as light as I can. But in this case, it was about 900 grams for the sleeping pad, but it has been so worth it because it's wider than usual and it is super, super comfy. So that's my uh, sleeping pad. I've got my, but this uh, while now, that's my Rab uh, Mythic 400 sleeping bag which weighs absolutely nothing. It packs down really, really small. It's a brilliant down sleeping bag. I've got my, inside it, I always use a liner. So that's one of the, uh, oh, what are they called? Uh, that's the Sea to Summit Thermolite Reactor Liner. I always use a liner because I don't like using liners, but it just means you have to clean the, the bag less. And when you've paid you know, that was about 500 quid, that sleeping bag. So when you've paid so much for a sleeping bag, you don't want to get it dirty and greasy, you know, in no time. So it, to me, it just makes sense to use a liner. And um, I don't mind it. And um, it's just a necessary evil. So I had a great night in there. And what I've started doing, and I found it really, really works for me, inside my pillow here, I have got, uh, which I've had for ages, um, is this decathlon inflatable pillow. So I'll put the decathlon inflatable pillow in a sleeping, uh, in a pillow slip, and then I put my warm jackets and whatever else inside on top of that just to bulk it out. And I've found it just makes a great pillow. 
So yeah, top tip. And then as a spin around the other way, um, so I mean again, <laughs> admin explosion but so i'm just making my breakfast now watching a bit of news i've got the old uh, ipad there again uh, just catching up on the news and uh, so i'm just making a coffee and then i'm going to uh, make some breakfast in a bit i've got a bit of my black pudding left so i'm gonna fry that up add to it uh, i've got one of these all day breakfast things one of those wayfarer things down there so i'm gonna uh, heat that up uh, put it all in my frying pan and have a very yummy breakfast and then I'll start to pack up. It has been raining, um, it's been raining since about four, it's been fairly windy overnight so um, yeah the tent's getting a good test in this weather. Right, breakfast time. Starting to pack up now <laughs> having had my breakfast and, uh, and it's really really chucking it down. Uh, I mean the tent's been great, you know, I've been um, really comfy. Um, just let me say this now while I think about it, because I will forget to say it later. Uh, I have seen some people in various forums saying about these tents leaking and letting water in. And I always treat any tent that I buy as not being 100% waterproof until I've tested it and I'm happy that it is. Um, now some tents you buy you need to apply seam sealer so that's you, you apply it to the seams on the outside of the tent not on the inside obviously we're on the inside here but the seam sealer se seals these joints here uh, so one of my quite expensive tents I re-seam sealed it um, in the summer and I sprayed it with some fab seal and uh, I was out in the rain in that and it it was absolutely bomb proof now this tent I put it up in my garden I left it for a few days in the rain I checked it it wasn't leaking so I thought right it'll be fine then I'm happy that it's going to be good but probably what I will do now in the summer or sorry in the spring is apply a coat of fab seal to this which will obviously help seam the seals a little bit and all the rest of the tent so um, but it's been absolutely fine or perfect uh, tonight it's still raining quite heavily uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I'm just gonna drop the inner down and fold it up because it's still quite dry and then put it in my bag separately so it's not so wet when I get home and then when I collapse the inner um, it's not uh, sorry when I collapse the outer it's not gonna get the inner all wet and you know just make even more of a mess when I get home what I haven't got for this yet, I, need, I should have bought one when I saw one on eBay, but I didn't, and now I regret that. I haven't bought the footprint for this. So Van Gogh do make a, an official footprint, proper fitting footprint, which I will buy as soon as I get a chance, but I can't find one anywhere. So I've just got my last couple of bits to uh, pack onto the bike now, and then uh, I can strip down the, uh, the outer of the tent. It's, it's done really well. Um, in the weather and the rain and uh, that's a good test for it there. One thing I definitely think you need to think about is the pegs. So let me just pull this out. So these have been brilliant. These are these uh, sort of Y-shaped pegs. Um, you can get them cheap on Amazon but you can see that one's bent. Um, it's quite flinty the ground here. So um, but it's obviously something you need to think about because the pegs that come with a, with a tent are absolutely useless. But other than that, it's been great. Uh, it's been a great camp. So I've just got to go and take my beer bottles and my rubbish, find somewhere for them. And uh, while I'm doing that, I'll just give you a bit of a tour of the facilities. So this is the sort of pot washing area. Um, it's all nice and clean. It's all covered in this, in this bit at the end of the shower block here. And then there's a dog shower there, so if you come with your dog. And then just look at this, poshest toilets ever. So you've got this toilet block with, what's that, one, two, three, four, four, probably about 12, one, two, three, six, yeah, about 12 uh, rooms, and each room's an individual sort of um, mixed gender room with a shower, toilet, sink, so you can come in and uh, get yourself cleaned. It's very warm in here. 
really clean. Yeah, excellent facilities. Yeah, I really like it. Only thing is, I've just realized the bins are way down there. So the bins are there. And then as you come into this other shower block just here, this is another um, good block. And uh, so that's the only sort of field I've seen that's quite slopey. The rest of them are fairly level. Another dog shower, laundry room, toilets, more sinks, baby changing, more showers, fridges, and a bit of a book swap area, but there's not much uh, going on in there. I'll touch in the void, brilliant film. Fred Divner, legend. Um, yeah, great facilities, great site. Right, that's not how I'd normally uh, roll up the tent, but because um, it's wet. So you get one of these, what they call a sort of burrito style bag with these tents, uh, which just means it's a massive bag. So I've already got the, the little um, ground sheet for the vestibule area in there that's a little bit wet and muddy. So I can just drop that on top there. Pegs in at the end. Uh, zip it up. Cinch it up. And then you've got these couple of straps on the bag that just mean it's uh, it's a doddle to um, to put away because the bag is plenty big enough. I, obviously, the, the inner isn't in there. The inner's in my bag because I've kept that dry. Uh, but yeah, that is cinched up and away. Right, we timed that well, so we're all packed. Just make sure we haven't left any pegs. Yeah, that was good, I enjoyed that. That was a uh, nice camp, nice site. It's not cheap, but as ever, you get what you pay for. Had a lovely shower. Um, yeah, really, really enjoyed that. Well, that was smashing. Enjoyed that. I've got a bit lucky with the weather because it was quite warm. I think it only got to about seven degrees was the lowest temperature last night. So it was plenty, plenty warm enough. Just a little windy. Obviously gonna rain for the ride home, but that's no drama. Yeah, nice. Yeah, fantastic shop that. If you come here, then everything you're ever gonna need is, is gonna be in there. We're going to go this way, down here. So, um, final thoughts on the tent. Well, um, I think for what it is, for what it's designed to do, you know, if you're going to do a bit of sort of camping at the Adventure Bike Festival or meet up with mates at a campsite, you know, in the summer, and setting up a base camp and then going riding around for a couple of days which is what I would do if I was to come here as tents go for the money I don't think you can beat the Van Gogh Galaxy 300 for, for that sort of thing for a tent you can stand up in that's fairly lightweight it's compact it's easy to carry on the bike um, yeah the, the, it, it's such a, a good tent um, Is it better than the Lone Rider Moto Tent or the Rip Versus Out of Karma? I mean, I don't know. I mean, my mate Sean's got a Lone Rider Tent. I've been out with him when he's been using it. 
and um, yeah seems like a good bit of kit but I wouldn't say it's any better quality or gonna stand any worse weather than than the Van Gogh so yeah I think for the money the Van Gogh is an excellent bit of kit for the money and if you use it for what it's designed to do in the conditions you des uh, you meant to use it in um, I would add that definitely you look at getting the footprint I, I love a footprint when you when you're packing up on a wet day it saves you really trashing and getting the tent muddy if you can roll it up on the footprint it obviously protects the tent gives you a bit more waterproofness uh, from the water coming up yeah so um, I'm definitely gonna get the footprint yeah so you definitely want to change the pegs um, but apart from that you know it's a, it's a great comfortable two-man tent it is listed as three-man but it's a great comfortable two-man tent for an absolute palace for one this is the perfect scenario of when I want a bigger tent of what we've had this weekend I want to come up here I want a nice ride up I want to relax in the evening I want to be able to cook I'm in a chair and the table I have my tablet out. I watch the cycling I, uh, I watched some Christmas movies so I had a, just a fantastic relaxing time now if I'd have been a, in a little two-man lightweight you can only lie down in a tent then and that would have been shit this morning getting ready and ah would have been shit especially if the rain had continued and no one on this earth is going to convince me that that little trip i've just done would have been better in a smaller lightweight tent and there are no advantages to it not uh, it might take you two minutes less to set up the tent and uh, two or three minutes less to pack it away but for everything else it would have been crap so yeah so there we have it that's it that's my thoughts I hope you've enjoyed this review and I will stick some links in the description to Van Gogh's website so you can check out all the full-on specs and that um, and a few other links to various bits of kit that I've mentioned um, so look in the description any questions leave them in the uh, comments um, obviously I'd love it if you could subscribe to the channel and obviously love it also if you could get the conversation going with your thoughts what you use especially tents that you can stand up in thanks for watching hopefully see you back on the channel soon for another adventure or failing that I hopefully see you out on the trail riding your bike thanks bye for now